I'd love to share some of the exciting work we've been doing in the Special Olympics movement in the United States and around the world, but I know you're in very good hands with the two young women there with you today, two who have been very much a part of that exciting work, very much leaders of that exciting work. They embody the true inspiration and the meaning of our commitment to youth leadership, to social change, and to inclusion. They can speak to the fact that sometimes and sometimes even without realizing it, our schools create environments where young people don't feel like they're apart, where young people feel excluded, where many, many, too many young people feel on the fringe of belonging. It happens every day. It can give way to exclusion, to stigma, to bullying, to low academic performance, to depression, and to a whole host of behavioral challenges. Most importantly, it gives birth to despair, to the lack of a dream. Yet, we've seen how young people who are given meaningful roles, leadership roles, who can embrace the idea of social justice for all, who can embrace a commitment to inclusion for all, who can understand the power of human diversity, how these students can help create schools, climates where everyone feels accepted and respected and is given the chance to perform to their very best. Our job as educators continues to be to focus on that hope that everyone can achieve, that all young people can feel empowered to build and create the future that they see as the most important future for them, a future of expanding circles of justice, powerful experiences of equality, and meaningful hopes of inclusion and belonging, active membership in the community for all, and that means ensuring that the social and emotional progress is nurtured together with the academic achievement focus of schools all over the world. I hope that you enjoyed watching our It's Our School Too show, a play created from real stories of young people with and without intellectual different abilities. It resonates. It resonates with all of us because when students are given a voice, a platform to share, they too can educate. They too can teach. They too can create now the kinds of communities they want to see for all. When we set the stage for young people to share their concerns, their ideas, and their vision, and allow them to suggest the solutions, we create the possibility of success. I'm honored to introduce you to two extraordinary young women, Jamie Beheimer and Danielle Liebel. Jamie carries herself with grace and poise and power, and she's just 16 years old. She just co-authored the Inclusive Youth Leadership Guidebook and co-chairs the efforts to continually educate students on inclusive leadership around the country. Danielle was recently selected as a Peace First Prize Fellow for a two-year fellowship that showcases young people who have confronted injustice, crossed the lines of difference, and had the courage and compassion to create lasting change. She also serves on the Special Olympics Minnesota Board of Directors. She's overcome a lot of adversity, but you wouldn't know it to see her smile. She just shows the determination to stand up for herself and for others. Both Jamie and Danielle share my passion for Special Olympics, but more importantly, they share a commitment to building a more hopeful and inclusive future. You'll soon learn about them, about their commitment, and about the power of youth leadership to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and now please welcome Jamie and Danielle. All right. yeah. Good morning everyone. My name is Jamie Beheimer and I'm thrilled to be here with you all today. Alone, we can do so little, but together we can do so much. It was his first big competition and the whole bowling alley was cheering for him. Seeing the smile on his face made people cheer even louder. The way everyone joined together just for him was the most amazing experience ever. In 2008, I had the opportunity to attend my first Special Olympics event as a sister cheering on her brother who has autism. My brother Jason was a fearless bowler and qualified to participate in the area bowling tournament and I wanted to be at the bowling alley to cheer him on. 
While we were there, people were bustling, pins were being knocked down, but most importantly, celebrations were being made. Hundreds of people, with most never meeting before that day, joined together to support each other, to make strikes and earn the top score. The atmosphere generated a community of excitement and friendship. Having an older brother with an intellectual disability, I was exposed to a life much different than my peers. Growing up, my family had one rule. Always support each other in anything and everything. This meant that Jason would attend my gymnastics and ballet classes while I went to his speech and occupational therapy sessions. While most kids would have hated following their older sibling, I enjoyed it. Being with my brother was all that mattered to me. And naturally, when he joined Special Olympics, I wanted to be right by his side. How lucky was I when I started middle school and my district started offering Special Olympics Unified Sports, a program where students with and without intellectual disabilities compete side by side in a variety of sporting events. Not only was I given the opportunity to work with my brother, but I was also able to meet some of the greatest people in the entire world. Not just through sports, but through student leadership as well. Because of my active involvement with Special Olympics during middle school, I was able to join the National Youth Activation Committee during high school and meet one of my greatest friends, Ms. Danielle Liebel. Jamie came from a different background than I did. Unlike Jamie, I was considered the weird kid. Having cerebral palsy, I knew I was different. I mean, come on, not every kid has the ability to fling their mashed potatoes all the way across the cafeteria. <laughs> Growing up, I never saw these differences as a negative thing. Well, at least not until I entered my elementary years. It seemed as though my peers would make a point to call upon these differences as if I wasn't aware of them. Did you know you walk funny? We might as well call you four legs because you shake so much. You're slow. These are just a few comments that I heard throughout elementary school. And if that was not enough, my fourth grade teacher thought that she too should join in, telling me that she would not answer my questions because I was too dumb to understand them anyways. I was just a waste of her time. My voice seemed to get lost among all these comments. It became harder to see myself as an equal to my peers. It wasn't until I switched schools and joined Special Olympics in middle school that I realized that my voice is legitimate and it is important. Middle school for me was a time of critical change that allowed me to be who I wanted to be. Middle school is a time of self-discovery. It is a few short years where boys and girls get a sense of who they are and who they want to be. Given more freedoms and exploring a world of extracurricular activities, it is a crucial time for all young individuals. Being introduced to Special Olympics during middle school was the most rewarding experience of my entire life. I can honestly say that it is the first organization I have ever connected with. And I believe that everyone in middle school should be given the opportunity to participate. Being a partner, I was able to train with athletes and gain a multitude of friendships. Peers would hear stories about my competitions or practices, but did not understand the true meaning of inclusion and acceptance. To really connect with the concept and importance of inclusion, I strongly believe that students need to participate in an event firsthand. The experience creates a sense of belonging, something that I know I was looking for in middle school and believe many other young adults strive for as well. Assisting an athlete firsthand or working side by side with a partner is a feeling like no other. Knowing that you have a friend who supports you 
is one of the many gifts of joining Special Olympics. Because Special Olympics is an organization fostered around acceptance and inclusion and strives to unify all individuals and recognize for the people for their abilities, not disabilities. Special Olympics is joy and respect, but also dignity and empowerment. Special Olympics is a family, and once a member, always a member. A sense of belonging is something that all students in middle school search for. For me, just like Jamie, mine came through Special Olympics. When I first started competing, I was with fellow athletes that were going through similar things as me, and we connected quickly. This feeling was powerful, but what was even more powerful was when I joined the Unified Bowling. It allowed me to interact with my peers who did not have intellectual disabilities. It allowed me to realize how I am not that different from my peers. And in fact, we have a lot in common. Special Olympics is not just sports. It's a revolution. It's a revolution of acceptance and inclusion, allowing barriers to be broken down and allowing friendships to be formed. These friendships help me gain a sense of confidence and a voice for change, something that I wish all youth with and without disabilities could experience together. This revolution is transforming the way in which we relate to one another, especially with those individuals with intellectual disabilities. In middle school, I had the chance to participate in Special Olympics athlete leadership programs, which taught me valuable skills such as public speaking, how to be a successful volunteer and coach, and how to be an effective member of the Special Olympics Minnesota Board of Directors. But most importantly, these programs taught me how to be an advocate for not only myself, but for my fellow Special Olympics teammates as well. These advocacy skills came in handy at the 2009 Special Olympics World Games in Boise, Idaho. I had the chance to participate in the Global Youth Activation Summit that consisted of over 180 Special Olympics athletes and unified partners. We noticed that there was a problem that we felt needed to be addressed. The derogatory use of the word retard and retarded. With the skills that Special Olympics had taught me, I was able to participate in forming the National Spread the Word to End the Word campaign, which is now hosted in hundreds of schools around the country. I, too, was able to host the Spread the Word to End the Word campaign in both my high school and middle school. When I was in seventh grade and my brother was in eighth, we decided to host our own Spread the Word to End the Word campaign in the same year Danielle launched the campaign. Together, my brother and I advocated for eliminating the hurtful use of the word retard from our school campus. This event was held and was a catalyst for my involvement as a youth leader with Special Olympics. But it also provided my brother with the opportunity to share his voice with the student body. While my brother and I have always been two peas in a pod, I normally talked enough for both of us. However, after participating in the Spread the Word to End the Word campaign, he developed a voice of his own and continues to use it today. The opportunities for leadership that we both had through Special Olympics during middle school gave us the confidence we needed to enter high school. Upon entering high school, I was unaware of how many opportunities I would be given 
to engage in extracurricular activities. However, I knew where my passion was. I continued to participate as a partner in our unified sports program, but was also introduced to the Special Olympics Arizona Youth Activation Committee, a group of high school students with and without disabilities that work to instill acceptance and inclusion in schools throughout the state. Last year, our group of 12 youth leaders invited 30 schools to participate in a Youth Activation Summit, which is an event that brings together administrators and students from across states to talk about Special Olympics programs and how they can spark interest in starting at schools. At this event, administrators and students, both with and without intellectual disabilities, joined us for sessions about leading the inclusion revolution and ended the day with a unified basketball game to keep spirits alive and amplified. All 30 schools signed a letter of intent that day and continue to participate in Special Olympics programs and the Special Olympics movement. Working to continually inspire others, our Youth Activation Committee hosted a leadership conference this past August with more than 50 schools from across the state participating. The three-day conference included professional development sessions for both athletes and partners, as well as inclusive activities where over 2,000 individuals had the opportunity to engage in unified events. Unlike Jamie, I did not join my state's youth activation committee, primarily because Minnesota did not have one. However, as a high school student, I had the desire to make an impact that would result in more inclusive schools. Special Olympics Minnesota recognized this need and desire and informed me that the National Youth Activation Committee was looking for new members. The National Youth Activation Committee is a group within Special Olympics that consists of 20 youth with and without disabilities that advocate for a more inclusive and respectful society. I was accepted onto the Youth Activation Committee where I had the chance to develop my leadership skills by being able to help plan and implement initiatives with my fellow colleagues. My skills within the committee led me to obtain a co-chair position for two years and to help Special Olympics Minnesota develop their own youth activation committee. Being around other youth that share my love of Special Olympics has been one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life. My love for Special Olympics grew, and after serving a year on the State Youth Activation Committee, I also applied for the National Youth Activation Committee, and that's where I met my lovely friend Danielle. Last year, Danielle and I worked with three other youth leaders to co-author the Inclusive Youth Leadership Guidebook, a resource that was designed to inspire and train students across the country, whether they be affiliated with Special Olympics or not, to lead the inclusion revolution. The guidebook includes five pillars, inclusion, co-leadership, teamwork, communication, and environment. Each pillar provides students with the information they need to create inclusive atmospheres within their community. The Inclusive Youth Leadership Guidebook is a catalyst for a movement that supports the nature of the human spirit. It is a resource designed to educate and inspire people across the country about the benefits of creating whole community engagement. This year, our committee will be working to ensure an easy transition for students to start their inclusive youth leadership journeys because inclusion is becoming the latest social norm. Special Olympics gave me one of the greatest gifts that I've ever received, passion. Over the past few years, I've been able to see the positive effects of inclusion both in my life and the lives of my teammates. It makes me wonder, what would it be like if inclusion was considered the norm? Imagine the injustices that people with disabilities face and how those would be affected if they were included in society as the valuable citizens that they are. 
This passion is growing every day within me, and I have made it my personal mission to make it happen. And I am proud to say my mission to make sure that inclusion will be the norm is underway. In college, at my college, the College of St. Benedict, I co-founded a student club that ed educates students and staff how to interact with people with intellectual disabilities by allowing students to participate in unified activities. This led me to win the Peace First Prize, a $50,000 national grant and fellowship that will allow me to expand this club to colleges and high schools throughout the state of Minnesota. I also have my story featured in the book, Stand Up, 75 Young Activists Who Rock the World and How You Can Do Too. Just saying this book is for sale in the bookstore and I'll be signing autographs. <laughs> Special Olympics helped me shape my future. It helped me realize that if I have the determination and passion, there are no limits in what I can or cannot do. Without Special Olympics, I would have never experienced joy like I have over the last seven years. I have become a more caring person, and the talents of every athlete I meet constantly inspire and enrich me. We have become champions together. Athletes and partners like my brother, Danielle, and me are embarking on our journey of social change. Our journey has just begun. And with the continuation of programs like Spread the Word to End the Word and Inclusive Youth Leadership, we will impact the lives of others. Because as young people, we are able to change the world. Now, we are going to turn it to you, the teachers and administrators, to help other students, your students, to create the, their story of acceptance, inclusion, and respect. As a teacher, you are more than someone who teaches math or social studies. You are a role model for a positive way of life inspiring your students to participate in Special Olympics will impact society forever. You will be the leaders in a movement that has already begun. So, what are you going to do? Will you join us in the inclusion revolution? Thank you. Please stay here. Yeah. <laughs>